Hello friends, welcome to Online Rip Tutor. I am Sanjay. In this video, we'll discuss a very interesting topic of Code Igniter 4 and that is how to print or get last executed query. If I back to editor, so let's say that we are executing some database query. We are using some select command, insert command, update command or delete command. So after execution, we would like to know that at what query we have worked what basically query the code igniter generated so in this video we'll discuss all about the complete basics concept that how to get our last executed query and we will see this concept either by using query builder method or model based concept so first i will discuss all by using query builder method so let's go inside app controllers i will open any of our controller file so let's say that i am selecting site controller.php and one more thing i would like to tell before discussing that we are learning inside code igniter 4 if you go and look over inside code igniter 3 so you will see that we have the available option as this db and here we have the approach as last underscore query so by the help of this line actually we can get our last executed query but inside code igniter version 4 we have some different approach let's go back to editor so we will use query builder method so first of all let's create a method here so it's a public function and i will create a method let's say get students because this application has been connected with a database if I go inside our .env file, scroll down, here inside this database connection string values, we can see here the database as cifo underscore videos underscore tutorials. Back to browser, here we have our database and inside this db, here we have a table called students. Inside this table as we can see that total number of rows equals to 108. Back to editor, let's go inside site controller. And here, first I will select all the students what we will have inside our table. So before executing any query using query builder method, first we need to create all about a database object. So here, let's say db equals to, we'll use db connect a helper function of code igniter 4. So once we use this line, then it will create a database object. By the help of this object called db, now we can create a table object so as we know that we are going to interact with students table so we need to create a students object so here the table will be called students here we have the table name as students now this line of code is going to return a table object and that will be something called student table object now by the help of this object, now we can execute any of the method, either it will be insert, update, delete or select. So here in case, we are going to select all the data. So here, let's say students equals to student table object and we will use find all method not exactly find all, actually we are using query builder method. So in this case, we'll use get method and then get result array so once we write this line then this line of code is going to return all the data what we'll have inside this table so let's echo that so echo pi tag to format our output and here let's say print our students let's create a route i will go inside config folder app config and inside this config i will open routes.php so let's create a route here so routes i will use get method let's say students it will call site controller scope resolution operator and here the method will be get students save this change go back to project terminal let's start development server so php spark serve press enter development server started so to access application i will go and open link after accessing project url so let's type students press enter now we can see that we are getting all the data what we have inside our table 
but this is not our sense of this video we want to get last executed query so this is all about to get means select all the data but we want a row query so what i will do let's echo this db means not this db actually this is database object so db and i will use get last query so this is the method by the help of that we can get or print our last executed query so let's comment these two lines save this change back to browser go and reload now we can see that behind the scene this is the query running select all from students let's add one more case here i will go inside our table and inside this table let's say that i want to select let's say whose designation equals to seo so what i will do go to editor here i will use where method where let's say designation equals to seo save this change go and reload so first i will let's say i will comment this line and uncomment these two lines go and reload now we can see this is all about we have the data now we want to get our last executed query so let's uncomment that save this change go and reload now we can see that select all from students where designation equals to seo so this is by which we can get our last executed query this will work not only for select this will work for insert update and delete let's see that how we can generate the command in case of insert so i will go and let's comment this line because this is all about to select data and by using this table object let's say that i will insert a single row inside our table so student object we will call insert method and inside this insert method look at intellisense we need to pass a set of data so passing an array here and to create a student what data we need go to structure so for this students we need name designation email and phone value because id is the auto incremented column and created at has its current time stamp as a default value so let's go here the first value we need called name email designation and finally phone so here let's say that this is what i will insert here designation let's say web developer and phone number it's a dummy value so successfully as you can see that by the help of this insert method and our task data now we are inserting a student into our table so go and reload now as you can see that if we go inside our table first let's check that we are getting that data inside our table or not so as you can see that at id 113 now we have inserted our own row if we go to get our last executed query and here is the query so the same statement same line of code will work for insert method update method delete method as well as for select method so this is what we had seen using query builder method let's interact with students table by the help of a model based concept so first i will go and remove all the existing code from this method now inside the site controller we have a single method which is totally empty so here if you go inside our app folder inside app if you go inside models now we can see that here we have a student model.php which is associated with students table so first if we want to interact with our table for any operation like select insert update delete we need to create an instance of that so i will go and load this model to this controller file first so let's say use student model model loaded go inside our method and here let's say student model object equals to new student model now by the help of this object 
we can go and execute our insert method, update method, delete method, as well as select method. So let's say that I will select all the data from table whose designation equals to SEO. So here, let's say data equals to student model object and I will use find all method. So this line of code is going to select all the data but I want only the designation equals to SEO. So let's add where condition. So where designation equals to SEO. Now if I will go and print that. So print our data. Save this change. Go back to browser. Go and load. Now we can see that we have all the data. But we want our last executed query. So in this case, we need to create a database object. So here, what I will do, I will go and define our construct method. So double underscore construct method. Let's define first a private variable called db. Go inside this method and here I will initialize our db variable. So this db, it means we accessing our private variable called db equals to either we can use config or db connect helper function. So if we want to initialize our database object using database class, so backward slash call config database scope solution operator and connect method. Or the second alternative way is all about this db. This db equals to db underscore connect. These two methods equals to same. So in this case, I will use this first approach. So I will copy this db, go inside at the bottom of this method. And let's echo this db and I will use the same method called get last query. Save this change. First, let's comment these two lines of code. Go and reload. Now we can see that select all from a student's table where designation equals to SEO. So this is how we can generate our last executed query. So in this case, we can use the same line of code in case of insert, update, select and delete. In case, if we want to log our message into a log all file instead of printing, so in that case, I will use a function called log underscore message, a helper function of PHP. So in this case, instead of printing into output screen, what I will do, I will use log underscore message. Look at IntelliSense, the first value we need to pass log label. So here I will use info. And in the second value, we need to pass a message. So in this message, let's say this DB. And I will use get last query. So once we write this line, then this will go and log a logger message. It means our last executed query inside a log file. And that log file will be stored inside public folder. Why inside public folder? Because inside this public means inside this project setting. If I will go inside app, config, logger.php. So for logger settings, I have set my path equals to public folder. In your case, if this, this will be set into a different folder structure. So at that folder, you will get your logger file. So if I will go inside public folder, here I have two files. Let's go and Reload this page, no output, it means we have logged our message into that logger file. Go inside public folder, here I have third file. Now we can see that info log label and this is all about our last executed query. So successfully, according to the application need, either we can go and print our last executed query or we can store inside a log file. So successfully, now we have the complete concept about getting our last executed query. So for this video session guys, thank you for watching and have a great day.